This video is a bit different to others in the Process Insights series. In this one, I want to introduce what I think is the best process tool I've ever seen. That's a big call. Watch to the end and see what you think. If you were describing a process to me, I'd be using this tool, perhaps with you on a whiteboard, but at least in my own notes. Build my understanding of the process. You may have heard of this technique called an IGO diagram or a scope diagram. And I'll explain later why I call it a context diagram. Let's explore that a little more. So, the best tool ever. Let's see if you agree as we step through an example of how it's used and the benefits it can deliver. So, this is the basic diagram. I'll go through in a moment the various components and then we'll use a simple example to fill it out. So, you might have heard of this as the Eisenigo diagram. And we have Roger Burlton to thank for that. You can see why it's called an IGO, I think, I-G-O-E. In the BP Trends Associates world, in the methodology and the training courses, Paul Harmon's world, then it's called a scope diagram. And we can see why it's called a scope diagram. It shows us the scope of the process. I call it a context diagram because I think it shows us the context of the process, both what happens in the process itself to some extent, but also the context in which it lives. And I think that's important. And I I hope you'll be able to see what I mean by that as we go through the examples. So a few pieces here, perhaps six areas of the diagram that we should comment on. Firstly, we've got inputs and outputs, so inputs to the process, outputs from the process. Inputs are changed or transformed in some way into outputs. Guides will tell us uh, how to make that transformation of inputs into outputs, and the enablers make it happen. So inputs, outputs, guides, and enablers. Everything inside the outside large box there is within the process, and everything outside the large box is outside the process, the context piece. So that's how we think about here in the middle, we've got, we'll name the process and we'll say something about its sub processes. Let's do that. So the process that we're going to talk about is make coffee. I'm just going to keep it simple. Imagine we're making coffee uh, at home or in the office, but not in a coffee shop. Obviously you can use this for any process, big or small. I'm just keeping it simple for this uh, demonstration. So here we have the name make coffee, good verb noun format. And then we've listed here the sub process. So in here, we just want to say what's involved in this process, what's included, what's not. So we can see the sub-processes here. We receive the request, assemble the ingredients, prepare the equipment, prepare the coffee, and present the coffee. So that's good place to start, Get, make sure we've got a good understanding of what process we're talking about. One more thing that we need to understand about the process and be very clear that we're all thinking about the same process is to say up here, top left and top right, firstly, what is it that triggers this, the execution of this process? So what is it that starts it? It might be more than one thing, but here we're taking the simple case of a request for coffee. How do we know it's completed? The coffee's been delivered in this case. So this is saying very clearly, it's everything from the request through to the delivery of the coffee. If we were in a coffee shop, we might have said, take order, make coffee, deliver coffee. And we might have said that was three separate processes requiring three separate context diagrams. No rules about that. Uh, whatever the processes are that we've got in our architecture, we can deal with it. But here we're just saying it's a simple make coffee, starts with a request and it's completed when the coffee has been delivered. Now, in each of those four elements, inputs, outputs, guides, and enablers, we're going to do this. We're going to identify, take outputs, for example, we'll identify the outputs, whatever they are. We name them, of course, uh, whatever they are. And importantly, we're going to say where they go to. And they're either going to go to a person, a stakeholder, uh, or they're going to go to another one of our processes. And you'll know it's a process, by the way, because it's got round corners. That's just the way we, we show them here in this diagram. So we want to know what all the outputs are, the actual outputs of the process, uh, and where they go to. And then we'll also do that for the other three uh, elements. There, of course, we want to know what the enablers, inputs, and guides are and where they come from. Now, this pairing of outputs and where it goes to and the other three, where they come from, that's really important because it gives us uh, the context. It shows us how this process works in its world. So it's a very important thing uh, to do. And if you don't do that goes to and comes from, then I think you've lost a lot of meaning for the process. Okay, let's, uh, let's start. So we're talking about make coffee. So not surprisingly, an important output of that process is going to be a cup of coffee. 
coffee and it's going off to whoever requested it. Now that's not the only thing though that comes out of the process is it? We have some dirty utensils, we've got usage data, we've got waste. You might be able to think of other things as well. So where do they go to? Well the dirty utensils goes off to the dishwasher. Note it doesn't have round corners, this is not a process. The usage data goes off to another one of our processes called Procure Supplies and the waste, the data about the waste goes off uh, to another process called Reuse Waste. So we're starting to build a deeper map. Perhaps you can see it already. We're starting to build a deeper understanding of this process. It doesn't just produce a cup of coffee. It produces other things. What about the inputs? Well, obviously we've got a request that's come from whoever requested the coffee. And then to keep it simple, I've just shown here ingredients. And that comes from a process called Procure Supplies. Sound familiar? We saw it over here. So we're seeing that process involved uh, more than once. And then we've got water and energy and it's come from the relevant utilities. Now, obviously, we can go into a lot more detail here and it's usually the case that you keep it as abstract as you can but you go to the detail if you need to know about the detail. So that's inputs and outputs. So inputs are the things that are changed or transformed in some way into the outputs. What else can we look at? Let's have a look at guides. Now guides will always be, you know, they're, they're the rules, the regulations, the legislation, the manual that tells you how to do something, the internal manual, the equipment manual. Maybe it's a price list if you're in, in a coffee shop. It's the things that guide the transformation of inputs into outputs and usually has some kind of text basis uh, to it or I guess could be a video some sort of instructional basis anyway so so here we're saying the recipe and, and here we always use grandma's recipe here a set of kitchen rules and they come from whoever sets the rules in your kitchen and we've got a coffee machine manual that's come from the uh, supplier so you could imagine the sorts of things that would be there in your real uh, processes so guides are things that are guiding the transformation of inputs into outputs. And now to complete the picture, we've got enablers. And enablers are going to be people and systems and facilities that enable that transformation of inputs into outputs. So here we've got a barista. We're at home, so it's a member of the family. We've got a coffee machine. We've got cups and spoons that have come from suppliers. So this is a simple example, but I think it starts to show you how we can build a much deeper knowledge about the process. This is a process we start out thinking we know a bit about, and perhaps we do, but imagine it's a process we're not quite sure about. Often my experience as a consultant talking to clients, it's their process, I'm new to it, I'm drawing one of these diagrams uh, just so I can have a bit much better understanding. So that's a kind of completed diagram, but it's not the end of the deal because now we can use this in some really powerful ways. We could say, OK, as in conversations with stakeholders, where are the problems? And in a nice graphic sense, we could put some red dots where we think there's a problem. We could say, where are the opportunities? And maybe they're going to be green dots. We can say, what is it we need to measure? Perhaps we've done some KPI work, but now we could test that. We're saying here that we've got waste that's produced. Now, is that important? Should we be measuring that? Do we have a KPI for the amount of waste? Do we need it or not? This prompts the conversation. And also then, where are the priorities? We've got lots of red dots. We might have green dots. Where are we going to start? What's most important? How do we set the priorities? We might do some kind of pain gain analysis to prioritize those, assuming that we can't do them all at once. So that's the powerful diagram. I, I hope you agree. It, it's the sort of diagram that I find most useful when I'm trying to understand what a process is about, who's involved, what it does. You know, it gives me a much, much deeper understanding. And, and we need that deep understanding of a process if we're going to be actively managing it. Because to actively manage it, we need to know about it, don't we? We need to know where the levers of change are, where the problems, what good looks like, what bad looks like. We need to be able to understand all of those things so that we can do good process management which leads us to good process improvement and as we're often saying in these videos that's the purpose of process-based management. If you want to have a go at this, have a practice. Pick a process and draft one. And if you want to, uh, send it to me and we'll jump on a call and we'll have a walk through it. I'm happy to, to do that. It just takes a little practice, perhaps. But once you've done two or three, you'll find they're easy to do. I wish you well. Let me know if I can help. Thanks for joining me for this Process Insight. There are many videos in this series with more coming every week. My intention is to build a significant library of resources that are valuable to you. You might like to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any. What are the process analysis and management tools that you find most useful? Please let us all know in the comments below.
more information about me, my training courses, my consulting work, and the columns that I write in the links below. You have my contact details. I'd be delighted to connect. And thanks for sharing this time with me. If you'd like to continue the conversation, I'd love to hear from you.